Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. The Donetsk city, which is occupied by the Russian forces, was attacked this night by Ukrainian army, probably. From the information I have just obtained, Ukraine targeted the Russian barracks just in the city. This photo was published by the pro-Russian channel, so you can see clearly the ground explosion with some of the fire. And some flash in the skies, probably the Russian defense is in operation. Why do I think that the Russian barracks were targeted? Because Russians started to spread the information that their military blogger was killed in this accident. Many of their channels shared and reported the same information. The Russian military bloggers usually spend time with the Russian military. From what I know, in Donetsk they usually have the comfortable environment for them to stay for a long time in some certain hotels. Since 2014, many of civilians left the Donetsk city because this city has no perspective being occupied by Russia. And there are lots of the buildings staying without owners, so Russia usually take those for their soldiers. As you see, Ukraine has the tradition to target Russian barracks every New Year night. The last year, Makivka was targeted with Russian barracks. It was reported that Russia lost at least 400 soldiers after the single Hymas rocket attack. This year, the scale of the Ukrainian attack is much lower, as we see for now, but nevertheless, it could be even more important because where journalists and military bloggers are located, there could be some officers. And according to the latest information from the Russian sources, RAN TV News, the Donbass Palace was under fire in Donetsk. As I say to you, Russia uses hotels and residential buildings sometimes as their barracks. And speaking about this particular hotel, I am sure that there were some of the Russian VIPs, which as reported got wounds at least. And here we have the latest images from the place, so definitely there was some certain celebration, the new year, and right after Putin congratulated everyone, there were some of the kabooms in the area. And this is the outside from the building, you can see some of the debris are lying around. Here we go with the frontal part of the hotel, as it was reported, one Russian propagandist lost his life. It is official, already confirmed, yet we still need to confirm the name of the Russian propaganda journalist who lost his life and many were wounded. One of the famous Russian military bloggers confirmed that they've lost few of the journalists in the place. He says that he knows the name of the casualties However, he will not say them because he wants officials to announce it first. I wonder who was there? Salaviov? Also, the big fire was spotted near to the highway that connects Moscow and Rublovka. Hmm. This information has just appeared in the internet, so it's hard to say what is happening out there. Alright, I just got the information that it was the diesel fuel storage. About the military map update, it seems like everyone is on holiday. We don't have any kind of the update from any kind of the source. So no changes on the front lines, however some of the battles were happening on the front lines and let me show them to you. Alright, the exact location has not been specified, I believe that it's on the eastern side of Ukraine, you can see snow already melted out there and the mud is all around. Russians had decided to advance a little using just the infantry forces, so infantry came with this track, probably Kamas. Kamas was staying on the crossroad for some time and infantry landed in a nearby building. The Ukraine Ukrainian drones saw that move and artillery fired to the place, totally demolishing the crossroad together with Kamas and the nearby building. Yes, artillery is still way more powerful compared to the FPV drones, but at some point less precise. And later on our guys finished the remains of the Russian Assad group with the cluster shells. Alright, as it is reported by the other source, this is the Avdivka direction, but I don't know, south or the northern part. Ukraine has already built many of the defense lines, for example, those are the Dragon T's. So in some way we were laughing about the Russian pyramids but they work. Simply there are no any other tools, how would you storm the tanks, just dig the trench, anti-tank trench, the special one, plus those cones should be enough to stop some of the Russian vehicles. 
Ukraine is putting those trenches on the northern part of the country and also on the east. Finally, something is being done to really defend the country. Because Russia has the potential to move ahead and Ukraine now is in lack of the resources, but with the proper defense lines, you need less resources to withstand the ground. All right, about yesterday's attack on peaceful Belgorod, the aim for Ukrainian army was to attack the Russian ammunition depots and partially some of the drones went to the place, but many were shut down by the Russian air defense and unfortunately hit the civilian infrastructure. The Ukrainian special services congratulated our people with a happy new year, they say to be continued, so I guess that finally they have the plans to cut the supply line across the Kerch channel. The problem now is that Russia put some of the defense against the drone boats. Well, the operation using the drone boats is not impossible, but really hard to conduct. Plus the railway bridge is very robust. Just look at those pillars. I personally have doubts that those pillars could be significantly damaged by the drone boats. During the previous attack on the bridge, the small pillars of the highway were just slightly damaged. So I guess that Ukraine needs something bigger than the drone boats, maybe some aerial weapon like attackers. The thing is that without cutting the supply line for the Russian army, the assault of Ukraine during the next year on the south is impossible. It should have been done already in 2023, before the Ukrainian advancement on the south, which failed. Russia has again launched the aerial attack on Ukraine. The explosions were reported in Odessa and Mykolaiv. This is the oldest chart, now everything is red. Financial Times gave their own forecast for 2024. They say that United States and the European Union will give enough military support for Ukraine to continue to fight against the Russian aggression. I'm also quite optimistic about it. I'm sure that Ukraine will get the military support. They also predict that Donald Trump will not be elected in the next year as the United States president. For now, as I understood, there are a couple of states in America which cancelled the application of the Donald Trump for the president elections, as far as I remember, Colorado and the state of Maine. But those are the local regulations in those states. Probably Trump still might apply for the position. The outcome in those particular states would be understandable for Donald Trump. Still, I wouldn't say completely no that Trump has no chances for the elections. Well, it depends on many factors and also on the rating of the current US president, who lost some of the points just recently. But maybe Financial Times know something and they say that Trump will not be elected. As well as they say that the current war between IDF and Hamas would not grow grow to the big regional conflict. And definitely we have the confirmation that basically Hamas doesn't have allies to fight against Israel, at least for now. And the future of Hamas is understandable, it will be just wiped out by IDF. About Taiwan, this source is sure that next year China will not intervene into that island. However, today in his New Year's address to people, Chinese leaders said that the plan for 2024 is to unite China, so he meant Taiwan. Well, I honestly think that China is too weak to perform this military operation. But China's economy is still predicted to grow next year for at least 3%. The Financial Times say that tweet Twitter is probably going to be bankrupt the next year. As for me, the company turned the wrong way. If I try to search for some of the Ukrainian topics, I got lots of the Russian propaganda out there. That's why I use Telegram. If you subscribe for a person, you just follow him or her and no one else. You'll not have recommendations around the topic, including the Russian channels. Well, there's some other stuff in their forecast, but it's not really connected to Ukrainian topic. Russia has modernized their ships with some of the machine guns on the sides. Those are used to destroy the drone boats on the way. Well, actually, there were many of the cases that Russia was successful in using those guns against the drones. I guess I know the location of the ship. This is the Russian patrolling big ship. It is located in Sevastopol. After the biggest Russian attack on Ukraine a couple of days ago, there was the report about the Russian missile that went to Poland. Well, Poland organized the search operation to find the debris of missile and they couldn't find it. Interesting, since the rocket was detected by the Polish raiders and also locals reported about whistle and explosion. 
All right, Russians are making some of the protection for their Buhanka vans, which they use for supplies. Actually, those vehicles are very capable if we speak about the off-road, and they deliver goods just on the front line. So it's very crucial for Russia to keep it going. That's why they try to make some of the drone protection or something, but usually it doesn't help because Ukraine uses FPV, and FPV is capable to target those vans from the sides. The roof might just protect against the drone drops. That's it. Okay, I found this photo on the Russian channels here you can see the russian soldier with american made rifle i wonder how they got the american made rifles well probably they trophied the rifle from ukrainians or even obtained it in afghanistan or iraq also i already told in my channel that there is some scheme that allows russia to buy the tools from america including weaponry so-called hunting shops are located in china kazakhstan and turkey and many other countries and they are buying equipment and selling it for russia maybe they even do it not just with the scopes or rifle parts but also with the rifles themselves because definitely those could be used for hunting well it's not a good sign as for the other news the analytic ward carl i'll put his channel in a video description down to this video well he says he served by the way in the united states army he says that the united states has already engaged in the war against the houthi army which tries to disturb the important commercial supply lines in the red sea so Ward came out with information that four of the Houthi boats tried to attack the commercial ship of Maersk in the Red Sea. There was the guard in the ship and they opened the fire towards the boats. Maersk's ship activated the distress signal and the local air carrier launched some of the helicopters to check the area. The helicopters were attacked from the boats using the small weaponry and later on helicopters fired back, destroying three from the four boats. They sank down together with the Houthi pirates. It is great that the United States Navy performs this prompt action to secure civilian ships in the place. However, the supply routes are still under the great risk. We all understand that Houthis themselves are just useless over there. They get all of the support from Iran, so actually it is Iranian initiative to block everything. Well, it doesn't work for them. Thankfully, the coalition is created and hopefully it will be even more capable. So again, I'll put the link to original information from Ward Carl. My friends, don't forget to press the like to this video and also if you want to support my job, you may check out some of the links in the video description just below. Thank you so much for your awesome support. Guys, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.